Okay, hello, welcome. Um, this video is just for my uh, undergraduate operating systems class. Um, I thought I would go over uh, the, uh, the, the, the little programs that I posted with some examples of using the standard template library in C++ from some of the things that people have been asking me about. I thought this might be useful. I mean, this class isn't about programming or programming C or C++. Uh, so, uh, but, but, um, um, I, I thought I would go over this just real quickly, so this will be a very long video. Um, I posted two files on our eCollege um, uh, doc sharing area, one called vector, vector example .cpp, um, and another one called uh, qstackexample.cpp. So I'm just going to go over those really quickly. This, these um, both show you how to use vectors and lists in the uh, C++ standard template library as a container. Um, and, and these will be very useful for you for the programming assignment. So in particular, you're going to have to do some things going forward where you have some queues, um, maybe some other things. You might need some lists and things. And, and if you're not used to using the standard template library, you might think that, that C and C++ are pretty deficient if you compare it to things like Java or like a high-level scripting language. But um, uh, especially if you're familiar with Java, you'll see that the standard template library is, is pretty similar. So, so you can create containers for lists and vectors um, and, and other um, uh, 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 more uh, complex things. So you can have uh, containers to do dictionaries or maps and sets. Um, and the standard template library also has algorithms and things. So sorting and stuff can be done with the, in, in the standard template library. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I just want to show this real quickly because this should be useful for your second program assignment and for the rest of the program assignments as well in the class. So in the first program I'll go over called VectorExample.cpp, let me, let me start down at the main program. So uh, I just showed an example of using uh, a vector here, okay, so you might, the very first thing you might ask is, so there's containers uh, in the standard template library like a vector um, and there's lists and um, there's uh, a couple of others like uh, DQs and Qs and things. So, so which one do you want to use? So most all of these can be used li like a, a straightforward list, just to hold a collection of items, all of the same type. Uh, the, the difference usually is that, that some of them are more efficient for some use cases than others. So a vector is really meant to be used if, <coughs> excuse me, if you're going to hold a, a collection of items, and you normally don't, aren't going to be removing items from the collection, but you might be growing it a bit, or so vectors are good for that if you're just adding things onto the end. If your item is going to, if, if your collection is going to grow and shrink a lot, you, uh, you really probably shouldn't use a vector. You should use like a list usually. Uh, but but they, they, most of these collections um, in the standard template library have uh, the same, most of the same things you can do with them to add items, remove items, and iterate over them. So I'll just use a vector to show the basics of that. So in, in C++ using the standard template library, um, if you want to use a vector, you, first of all, let me go back to the top here, you have to include vector. Okay, uh, if you want to uh, use a list, you'd have to include list. Um, so for most environments, the standard template library should be pre-installed for you, so you can use any of the containers from the standard template library. Um, and um, so uh, th this, my, this is the first example of just creating a, a vector. So uh, these containers in the standard template library will only hold one type of, of, of item. So if I want to hold a, a, a bunch of integers, a collection of integers, I, I do this. Um, so if, if you know what templates are in C++, you should recognize that we're using the templating mechanism to say, I've got this class called vector, and I'm templating it to, to uh, use integers as the, the, the type here. So, so I've, got a, I've got a collection called vians that I could use to hold uh, uh, a collection of integers, a vector of integers. If I want to hold a collection of strings, I could use the vector templated to hold strings. So vector strings called uh, v strings here. Um, if you want to hold a vector to hold other things, so you can have vectors hold your own user-defined types. So, so uh, in this example I gave you, I just threw in a small class here called my class with two private member variables and a constructor here. But I could create a vector uh, to hold uh, instances of my class objects. Okay. So this would be useful, for example, if you have a class for a process for um, your second program assignment. 
you could have uh, a class called processes, and you could, you could create a vector or list of processes um, and, and, and hold those to manage those, okay? Um, so I'm, I'm going to be just using the, the vector of strings. So, so the collection called vstrings here for all the examples uh, in, in this first one using vectors. Um, oh, uh, before I go on, um, you can use, I gave a couple of, of links to things you can use as references for the standard template library or for the C++ language in general. So this was one of them that's good. It's, it's just a general reference that's online that's freely available. Um, so c++.com. In particular, if you want to um, if you want to use um, c++.com, if you bring that up, and for example, if you look into the vector collection here, you can bring up the, the documentation, the reference for vector, um, and you'll have to click down here, the, the vector class, but then if you scroll down here, th this will give you all the member functions you can do with a vector, you know, so get the iterators for it. Uh, query it for its capacity, like its current size. So I'm going to show these. I don't show all these, but but uh, you can use this to see what other things you can do with a vector, or you know, if you wanted to, you could go and you know, see what things you could do with a list by clicking on list here um, and, and looking at the, the member items for a list and so on. Okay. Um, okay. So the first thing I'll show, I, I, like I said, I'll use the vector string. So the first thing I think I'll show is just use, adding some items. Okay. So uh, vectors <coughs> and lists uh, and queues and things allow you to, to treat them like queues. So you can push for a, vect a vector, you can push onto the back end. Um, and I can't remember, but I think you can push onto the front end as well. Um, so if I bring up the vector, back, uh, my, my vector again. Um, so we can look down here at the... Uh, the um, the things you can do with a vector, the member functions. So uh, these, these are modified. Uh, you can push the back. So a vector, you can only push and pop on the back. Okay. So, uh, so again, that's that's because a vector is only meant to to be useful for for uh, something that, that's mostly static that you add things onto the end. Although I'll show later, you can insert things in the middle um, and erase things in the middle. Uh, but, but yeah, you can use a vector like a stack and just push things on the back and pop them off the back, for example. But you can't easily use a vector as a queue. If you want to use a queue, you'd want to use a list or something like that. So, uh, but anyway, so, so we have a vector. Initially, a uh, vector of strings. Initially, it's empty. So here I'm just pushing on some strings. So I push onto the back uh, a couple strings. Hello, I'm, um, I'm an item on the vector and so on. So I push four strings on there. Um, and then um, here's, our, here's our second example of using a, uh, a member function for the, the, the vector collection. So I can, I can query the size of it. So after I do that, so let me go down here and actually compile that and run, run my little uh, example program here. So I compile it, and let me run it here and go back up to the top here and look at the output. <coughs> so this very first output here, the vstring's current size, uh, gives me this output right at the top here. We can't search your side. It's four, which makes sense. So, because we just put those four items in, we've got four items in the collection, okay? Um, so, the next thing I show you uh, in this little bit of code is um, how to iterate over the vector, okay? So, I show you a couple of different ways of doing this. The, the very first one um, is to uh, use the overloaded uh, open and close. Um, brackets as if you're just as if it's just a regular old old style array of values okay and so you can do it that way so so this uh, would look similar to old code if I had just an, an array of, of, of something um, so I iterate over and I access it like this okay so you can you can access vectors like this and and as long as the item that you have in your collection knows how to display itself to an I.O. stream, then this will um, access it and display it. So this set of output here comes from that first iterator. So <coughs> we access the four items and we just display those strings on to the C out um, I.O. stream. Okay? 
Um, but another way you can access, you can iterate over collections in the standard template library is by using iterators. Okay, so this this is you know you'll see the same thing in like the Java libraries has this idea of, of this concept of iterators. So you can iterate over co collections like list collections and things like this. So you can do this, the same thing in C++. So usually iterators look something like this. So you can use a for construct to do this. Here I use this auto keyword. This is new in C++ 11, okay? But I, I create a variable called iterator, and I use the, the vstrings.begin and vstrings.end. Uh, so this is a regular for loop, but it's the, the iterator starts at the beginning of the collection, my vstrings collection, and I iterate until I get to the end. So my iterator goes till I get to the end, and I just increment the iterator by one every time through the for loop, okay? And you know, you'll notice that begin and end are just member functions. Uh, again, if you look in the documentation for vector, you see these iterators. So uh, you usually don't need to use most of these others, except for special cases, except for be begin and end. So those return you an iterator to the beginning of your collection and to the end of your collection for these standard template library um, collections here. <coughs> so if you do that, uh, my second one, my, the second output um, is coming um, from that for loop. Uh, here, the, 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 the for loop using the iterator, uh, but it, but it accesses the item. So one thing I'll point out. So notice here. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Notice here, iterator is actually um, it's one of these iterator objects, but you access it like this. So I use the the star iterator. So iterator behind the scenes is actually a pointer. So this is one one place where uh, C plus plus standard template library is. Uh, exposing a little bit the guts of what's happening behind the scenes. So these iterators are really, they're, they're actually safe pointers. So you have to actually dereference the pointer to get the item. So if you do that though, you get the strings again, right? Um, now if you were using things before C++11, you might have seen creating a, a for loop to use this iterator that looked like this, okay? So here we declare our iterator. The, the actual type for the iterator is that it's a vector string colon colon iterator. So the way I read that is it's an iterator over a vector of strings. Okay? But um, so in C11 they have this nice little auto thing. So what it does is these are equivalent. It's just that from the context, uh, you know, since I'm uh, since vector vstrings.begin returns an iterator to my vector of strings, it, 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 uh, from the context, it infers that iterator must be uh, an iterator over a vector of strings, okay? So this just saves a little bit of typing, but, but these are equivalent. But if you look at old examples, and if you look at the, um, the, the, the standard template reference documentation that I gave you, you'll see a lot of code still defines it like this, okay? So a little bit more verbose. But this does the same thing, and you get the same output. So that was the, I think, the last one here, okay? All right, so moving on. Uh, like I said, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, so I'm just going to kind of show the rest of these examples. Some other things you can do. Oh, oh, actually, no, there is one more iterator. So this is also new in C++11, but you don't see a lot of C++ code using this, but this is really handy. So uh, now <coughs> uh, there's a new way to, to define an iterator over collections that this must let you verbose. This looks much more like high-level scripting languages nowadays. Um, so you can create an iterator like this, say, for string item in vstring. So the way I read this is that I'm going to iterate over this collect the, the standard template library collection called vstrings. Uh, every time through the loop, the, the next item in the, the collection is going to be put into th this variable called item, OK? Um, so since vstrings is a collection of strings, uh, item has to be of type string. If I had a collection of my classes, then item would have to be of type my classes here. Okay, uh, but yeah, this will work. So this was the the last time using the the more newer uh, explicit syntax to iterate. But all four of these methods for iterating over the collection should uh, you know you, you get the same items, the same four items out of the collection that are currently in. There. All right, but this is very nice. So I've started using this whenever I can, if I just need to do a simple iteration over a standard template library collection uh, like that. So. <coughs> All right, so some other things you can do, some of those other methods, uh, uh, member functions you can do with a standard template library um, vector collection 
you can check if it's empty or not. So vstrings.empty um, will return true if the collection is empty and false if, if it's not. So uh, vstrings is not empty. There's four items on it, right? So if we, if we call vstrings.empty, uh, you'll get the output there. Is vstrings empty? It's false. But we never put anything into um, into the, the vector of integers, so vint. So if we ask is vint is empty, um, and we output to the, our, um, our standard output stream, you'll see that um, um, that it's true, that, that vector of integers is empty. So you get a true. <coughs> um, so if, if you need to treat these collections as queues or stacks, you need to be able to peek at the front or the back item. So you can, you can peek both at the front and the back item. So again, usually these collections, some of these collections like vector are not going to be very efficient if you try and peek in the middle or look at the middle items. But they, they are very efficient just to find the last or the first item. Um, and vector is that way. So I, I can just call front to look at the front or back to look at the back item. So that should give me the first and last item. Um, on my uh, V strings collections, okay. um, and you can take the last item off. So there's a special method to pop back. And if you look at uh, the 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 list um, that we'll look at next here, if you look at the list uh, standard template library collection, there's both a pop back and a pop front. So you can use it as a queue or a stack. Okay. But but here we can pop back. When you do that, it actually removes the item. So now if you iterate over the items, you'll see that we've only got three items left. Okay, so um, after popping back, um, uh, if we iterate over, we just got the, the, the three items now. Um, and we don't have the, the last item on there anymore, all right? <coughs> okay, and then real quickly, I'm gonna show you, uh, I, I, in the original, when I posted this, first of all, there was a, an example of inserting items. You can't, like I said, you can insert items in the middle of a vector, it's not very efficient. You can insert items in the middle of a list or a queue. It's more efficient to use a list or a queue uh, or a DQ if you need to insert items in the middle. You can do it even for a vector, so use an insert. You have to use this iterator. Uh, so again, this is a little bit kind of crufty, but if you get an iterator to the beginning and just add like two to it, that'll insert it into the middle to, to index two, basically, of your vector, position two of your vector. Um, so yeah, if you look at this and then afterwards I iterate over, you'll see that we inserted, um, sorry, uh, this one that we inserted, insert me in the middle um, uh, here after doing this, uh, at index two, inserted the item after index one by adding plus two to the iterator. Um, and I had another, so you can actually use this insert to insert at the beginning and the end, even so, it, even though there's no, uh, uh, push to the to the uh, front. Uh, you can use this to, to actually do the same thing as pushing to the front with a vector. Uh, one other thing, I didn't have this in there before, but there's also an array. So I, I'll post this up here to eCollege today. But there's a <coughs> an array, so you can remove things from the middle. Um, as I was talking with with a couple of students, uh, this you might find this useful because one of the things you have to do in program assignment two is you have to keep track of, for example, all of the processes that are currently blocked. But when a process becomes unblocked, it's, it's not going to be at the beginning or the end of the blocked queue or list if you're just keeping like a list or a queue of your block processes. So you, so you have to remove it from the middle. So you can use a race to find it. So uh, a more typical thing you, you need to do to remove an item from the middle of a collection like a vector or a list is you're going to iterate through your collection uh, searching for the item to remove, and then when you find it, you just remove it. So I, I, I had an example of doing that with the vector uh, class here. So here's the example here. So you start at the beginning, um, uh, so you start your iterator at the beginning, and while the iterator doesn't go to the end, inside your U loop, you need to do something like this. So uh, if you find the item, so I have an example here, so since we have a uh, a vector of strings, I can just do a comparison. So if my item is equal to what I'm searching for, so this was one of the items in the middle of the collection, if I find it, I just want to erase it. So uh, again, I can use that iterator, iterator but now since I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm looping through the collection, it's, the iterator is pointing right to the item that I want to erase. So I erase it, 
And what erase does is it returns a new iterator that you can use to continue iterating from that point on. So you have to be careful when you're, uh, when you're iterating through a collection and you're uh, erasing items or removing items from the middle. You have to do it like this. You have to use the returned iterator from the erase or the remove function from the standard template library collection. Otherwise, if I don't actually remove anything, um, I need to just increment the iterator like I like we normally do. Okay. So if you look at the output uh, like this, so we were we were erasing the how are we doing. So beforehand, we had these five items where how are we doing was at index three, and if we iterate and, and, and erase, we now have four items, and we've removed um, that how are we doing. Okay. Um, and then there was a the final example of clear and so on. Okay. Uh, so moving on, uh, again, real quickly, let me look at this other example. Uh, in this other example I posted to eCollege, I showed an example of using um, the list uh, um, standard template uh, library to act as a um, as uh, either a stack or a queue. So this could be useful, again, for the program assignments for this class, okay? So at, at, first of all, we use it as a stack, okay? Um, so again, like before, I'm just going to use a stack of strings. Uh, I create a collection of strings, a list of strings. I call it string stack. And we, we push a, a couple of items on, on. So what we're going to be using is push front and pop front. So we just push items onto the front. So, so, so since we're going to use this as a stack, we, new items we just push on the front, and then if we need to pop an item, we pop off the front. Okay, so that's our stack. Um, <coughs> Um, dynamics or stack definition here. Okay, so if we push on um, three items, we can look at the top of the stack. We can look at the bottom. Uh, we don't normally do that for a stack, but we can look at the bottom using back, using front and back, and we can find the size. Okay, so let me just show those three real quickly. Um, <coughs> So there, I compiled it and ran it. Um, so this is the output from after putting the three items on. So we have the size of the stack is three. And, and you know, I show the, the the reason why you, you can actually use there, there's a, a definition for a queue and a definition for a stack in the standard template library. But what you'll find is they don't define the ability to iterate over those um, because you normally don't want to peek in the inside of your stack or the queue. But <clears throat> For the program assignments that I gave you for the class, you usually do because uh, you have to output what the current contents are of your queue, for example. So you need to iterate or, or peek inside of your queue, uh, for example. So uh, instead of using the queue, you can just use a, a list um, and, and use it like this. Use a, a list as a stack or a queue. I'm sure I, I show that. So I show uh, iterating over the stack of items in this case using that, that new style. So for each item in my stat, my string stack collection of strings, uh, we're going to iterate over it. <clears throat> so out here I printed out each one on, on its own line. So the first item ends up being at the front, and we're calling that the top of the stack. So, so, uh, so the last item we push ends up being at the top of the stack, okay? So that ends up being at the front or the top. Uh, and the first item that we pushed ended up down at the bottom of the three items that we pushed on. So then, you know, there's no, so here's popping two more items off <clears throat> and showing that, that the stack is empty. So after we, we pop over, uh, off two more items, um, <clears throat> um, we, we see if the stack is empty at that point. Uh, this one right here. So uh, after popping off two items, the, the stack is empty at that point. Um, okay, sorry. And then one final thing here. So I have this commented out, but uh, it is unsafe to uh, pop from a standard template library collection that's empty, okay? Popping front or popping back from an empty uh, list or empty queue uh, will actually, uh, it doesn't throw an exception, okay, so it doesn't actually detect that for you. That, that, to me, that's a little bit um, 
Uh, so, so most higher level languages like Python or something will actually throw an exception. We will detect that you're trying to pop or remove from an empty stack. But, but um, um, C++ standard template library doesn't do that. So uh, here, if my stack is empty, if we try and pop one more item from it, this is normally what will happen. So if I recompile that um, and run, you'll see you just get a segmentation fault. So it's not very informative. So it's just segment for the faulting. So the, the moral of that is every you really, before you ever do a pop, unlike what I was doing in this example I show you, you need to check whether it's empty or not. So if it's empty, you need to print an error message or do something saying, you know, something's happened. I'm trying to pop. Or, um, um, from an empty stack or a queue, and not do it. You know, otherwise, if, if you do do it, you're you're going to dump core and get segmentation fault. Okay. So let's let's not do that. Okay. And then likewise, there was a quick example of using a list as a queue. So again, you might want to use a list instead of just a queue from the standard template library because you need to iterate over the queue. Uh, but it looks pretty similar. So for a queue, you want to push on the back. Uh, and then pop off the front. Okay, so so I use so for list you have both push back and push front and pop back and pop front. So if you want to just use a single single uh, ended queue, you just always push on the back and pop from the front. Okay. So after we push on three items um, and we look at the size and we iterate over it. you get this. So after we push on the three items, the size of the queue is three. And uh, here I'm iterating. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing a new line after I, every item. I'm, I'm making it look a little bit more like a queue. Okay, so the first item comes out um, and we don't do in, we don't do in lines or to insert new lines. So we just put a comma between all the items. So the, the front item ends up being the first item since we're pushing uh, these items to the front. So we're I'm sorry, we're pushing these items to the pack. So the first item we, we push to the back ends up being the, the front of the queue, if you look at that. And then the second item is in the middle of the queue, and then the last item is at the end, okay? Uh, and then finally I showed an uh, example of, um, of uh, popping the last two items. Uh, and, and showing indeed that the queue is empty and, and again it's unsafe if it's empty to try and pop from the front or the back it'll actually seg fault instead of giving you an exception or something so um, all right so that's it like um, so I hope that's helpful um, um, uh, I, I will post bo both of these example programs are up on our e-college uh, doc sharing area for you to use uh, you should find those useful uh, when you're working on your second program assignment, at least I hope you do. Um, okay, well then, uh, go ahead and get working on your second program assignment, and uh, good luck.